reading is from Exodus chapter 3, verses 1 to 15. Now Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock to the far side of the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in flames of fire within a bush. Moses saw that though the bush was on fire, it did not burn up. So Moses thought, I will go over and see this strange sight, why the bush does not burn up. When the Lord saw that he had gone over to look, God called to him from within the bush, Moses, Moses, and Moses said, here I am. Do not come any closer, God said. Take off your sandals, for the place where you're standing is holy ground. Then he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. At this, Moses hid his face because he was afraid to look at God. The Lord said, I have indeed seen the misery of my people in Egypt. I have heard them crying out because of their slave drivers, and I am concerned about their suffering. So I have come down to rescue them from the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land into a good and spacious land, a land flowing with milk and honey, the home of the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites, Hivites and Jebusites. And now the cry of the Israelites has reached me, and I have seen the way the Egyptians are oppressing them. So now, go. I am sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? And God said, I will be with you, and this will be the sign to you that it is I who have sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you will worship God on this mountain. Moses said to God, Suppose I go to the Israelites and say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you, and they ask me, What is his name? Then what shall I tell them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. This is what you are to say to the Israelites. I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, Say to the Israelites, The Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, has sent me to you. This is my name forever, the name you shall call me from generation to generation. We encounter the presence of the living God in special experiences, in other people, in work, in nature, in gardening, in making things, in a conversation, in a book, or in silence. There might be burning bushes everywhere waiting for you to see them. Ordinary things, anywhere at any time, but in unexpected ways. I don't think Moses was expecting this bush to suddenly burn with a flame that didn't burn the bush. We may have to turn aside from what we're doing, the things that preoccupy us. Do you know, I spent an hour trying to get through to the NHS today and I can't do it, you know? And, um, well, the list can be very long of ordinary things that preoccupy us, and quite rightly, and they stress us and they wear us out. We may have to turn aside from what those things are doing to us to see this thing. We may have to develop inside ourselves a spiritual way of looking, looking differently at what we take for granted. To do that, we may have to slow down and even stop in order for an encounter to be possible. It's a lovely word. It's a two-way thing. 
You know those telephone calls where you put the phone down and you realise you've been talking all the while and you haven't listened to the other person, really listened. There's been no encounter. There's just been a monologue. Well, she said to me and I said to her, and the pills aren't working and da di da di da And you know, last time I went to say, sometimes people, including me, pray like that. And there's no encounter possible. Even though the Holy God of I Am is waiting for that space of silence and stillness in us for an encounter to truly take place. And we may not understand what we see or feel in an encounter. After all, we are talking about the creator of everything. There may be no easy proof that this is the holiness of God we're encountering and surprise, surprise, it may come to us through those unexpected ordinary material things focused in one particular part of creation like a bush but standing for all the matter and nature of creation. God enfleshed, embodied the one who was present, incarnate in the nature of Jesus. And in Jesus the flame shone from within the bush, but the bush didn't burn, wasn't destroyed. The flame shone within the humanity of, of Jesus. And people looked and some didn't see the presence of God. Some walked by his side and past him and behind him and in front of him and it was just another bush, just another person. They didn't stop and look to see the great I am burning from within. For he who was a creator became a creature and many were unable to recognize the truth of that. Perhaps they expected something different rather than something they took for granted in the ordinary humanity of Jesus. For the extraordinary comes in the ordinary if we know how to look even in ordinary things like bread and wine. Amen.